How much will we get from the Bank of England to deal with Brexit? QE is what everybody expects and a rate cut. Give me the quantums that you think we'll get in the time spans. I think that, I think that, I don't know if we'll see a rate cut in August. Um, 25 basis points is, we may see it as a signal, but 25 basis points to the average consumer, for example, it takes 15 pounds off the average mortgage here in the UK. So the stimulatory impulse you're going to get from that is not going to be, is not going to be great. I think it is all about, uh, all about quantitative easing. Uh, a move anywhere between 50 and 100 billion um, at the front end in, uh, in August and uh, maybe as much as 200 billion depending on how deep a recession it could be uh, moving forward through the next three, four quarters. How much do the investors need to keep across the sort of diplomatic dance that is now going to unfold between the UK? I mean, we saw it nicely illustrated there by Mark yeah. Dean, the comments from Arlon saying, of course, we can't talk before negotiations are actually triggered, but of course, we can plan those negotiations. I mean, yeah. there's this diplomatic language that investors are going to come up against all the time. We're going to see shoe, you know, shoes fall in so much that we've seen a political shoe drop with the Brexit and now we have to wait for the economic, first economic shoe to drop of the data and how the Bank of England reacts and then the next political shoe to drop is the beginning of the negotiation. So it's going to be back and forth, back and forth between these two, uh, <coughs> between these two factors affecting the, uh, affecting the UK economy. So once that data is out of the way, once the Bank of England starts to, starts to stimulate, then we can start moving back towards a more political leaning. I, I mean, we've had some interesting data this week, retail sales collapsing inflation spiking yeah. today we get this, this sort of we've never had this which is these flash PMIs I just pulled up um, some of the data going into the, the the PMIs today the services is the white line which is holding moderately well uh, manufacturing but it's the construction yeah. which is really falling off a cliff now that's not going to drive the whole of the UK the data sweep today how important is that to the Bank of England I think it's quite important from a sentiment point of view we've had a lot of sentiments out of the agents report in the past week or so um, as well but they're going to have to be looking at output it's all going to be based around output we heard from uh, Kristen Forbes uh, 24 48 hours ago very, 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 very similar things that we should keep calm and carry on until the data starts to show exactly, uh, exactly what kind of picture the UK economy is facing at the well, moment. Well, yeah, you say that, but the thing is, they they delayed doing anything at the last MPC meeting. Yeah. One of the arguments put forward is that the data picture will become more clear, but but not particularly because we get right. a lot of this survey stuff, but not a great deal of very relevant data, very backward-looking data, yes. Very backward-looking data and not much before August the 4th uh, as, uh, as well. It seems to be that the split in the MPC at the moment, that two members looking for cuts, uh, Haldane and Vlieger, and then McCafferty, Wheel and Forbes, I would say, on the hold camp. So we've got Cunliffe, Shafiq, um, Carney and Broadbent still to break. I reckon Carney takes them with him, and we and we see some stimulus in see some stimulus in August. Because otherwise, you know, look at credibility. Well, there was going to be some easing in summer. September's not summer. Yeah. So I think we'll. I think Market's we'll certainly set up for August. Exactly. Then.